Okay. Good morning. Uh, so today's lecture, I have this plan of uh, starting uh, with the uh, solving problems uh, what were asked in the uh, midterm examination. Uh, yesterday, there was a request to that uh, how could we solve those problems? So let's look at uh, in the first period of today uh, the solution of those two problems. Uh, understand how well we can apply. See, this is very simple problem. Uh, just application of uh, Newton's law in its other form, what we have learned in the uh, lecture R. Uh, so what was that uh, application of consideration of linear momentum, application of impulse and momentum principle, application of work and energy principle. So if we are good at this understanding these fundamentals uh, related to uh, collision phenomena, I think you would be able to um, solve those problem completely. Right, so that's what you will realize in case you have not understood and you are not solved in the examination at the end of the period. So for that, uh, let me just uh, um, uh, share my screen. Hope you are able to see the screen. And this is lecture number. Number 16, today's date 29 07 2021. So, problems asked in down exam. So there are two problems asked uh, in the midterm examination. One is uh, uh, related to collision of uh, system of vehicles. So the collision takes place, one hits the uh, other from its rear and then uh, that vehicle hits the uh, front vehicle uh, from the rear. Uh, that's one problem. So what was that asked is, uh, what was the uh, velocities after collision uh, is what is asked. Let's look at uh, when solving the problem in detail, the given data, what are the assumptions that go in uh, importantly to solve the problem and so on. For the other problem, it is head on head uh, collision of two vehicles, so which essentially uh, currently uh, uh, we have studied in uh, central impact problem, uh, a special case of uh, um, uh, direct central impact problem, which can be assumed to be 1D problem. So we know uh, the physics behind the collision. You know the uh, analytical uh, equation which you used to solve the problem called closed loop equations all in your hand. So we are just going to solve that problem so that uh, you would uh, concrete your understanding uh, of this particular module where uh, mathematical models for uh, uh, to quantify the collisions uh, scenario, right? So with that, let me just uh, go ahead looking at the problem. <clears throat> so this is the first problem. So you can see here there are three vehicles uh, in figure one, vehicle A, B, C. Vehicle A and B are of identical vehicles, right? They are of identical vehicle of same mass, uh, even uh, you are given the statement vehicle C also is of same mass but slightly of different model that's very well clearly visible in this diagram. So what is that uh, important first data is the vehicle mass MA equals MV equals MC though the style is different the mass of the weight of the vehicle also same so let's call the mass M of all individual vehicle. <clears throat> and another important uh, um, uh, uh, thing to be noted here is, see these two identical vehicle uh, cars A and B are at rest condition. So when it is at rest condition, the velocity VA here zero, velocity VB here zero. So this picture you can assume to be a picture before collision, right? And this vehicle, this vehicle is approaching with a given velocity of 1.5 meter per second. 
knowing that the coefficient of restitution between the vehicle. So between vehicle B and C, it is 0.8. And between vehicle uh, A and B, it is 0.5. So when you say coefficient of restitution, how do you define? It is ratio of uh, <clears throat> relative velocities. So it is ratio of uh, separation relative velocity of uh, vehicle to that of uh, um, approach uh, relative velocity of vehicle. So I can write between A and C like this. So it is V C dash minus V A dash by V A minus V C. So that's how this is defined. And how is this been defined? It is uh, between A and B. So I can write this as V B. Uh, I, I'll put here as double dash is because vehicle uh, uh, B is zero initially uh, not moving, A also stationary. So this hits, the vehicle C hits on B and then uh, this vehicle get an energy and that is why uh, uh, it, it has been pushed forward. And then uh, uh, at that time the velocity of this, when you have to look at the collision between B and A, uh, you have your initial velocity is uh, VB dash and your uh, final velocity of that after the collision is V uh, double prime. That's why I just put here V double prime minus VA dash by VA minus VB prime. So this is how your data to be understood in terms of coefficient of restitution values given. I think there won't be any difficulty of this. So you have here one equation, right? And determine the velocities of each car after all collisions have taken place, right? If at all the collision to take place, what is important? Uh, this velocity is more than this, so it's obviously hitting and there would be uh, exchange of velocities. Uh, so you would have exchange of velocities uh, not fully or can be partial. Uh, if I say uh, simply exchange of velocity means what? Uh, this vehicle gives 1.5 and this is stopped. It is not so. We have to find out that during solving the problem. So there will be uh, exchange of energy and uh, you would have B vehicle would be moving and it is going to hit. And uh, similarly this gain uh, energy. So this will have some velocity and this may not stop. While solving only we can find out. So we will have this velocity also. So what are all now unknown here is velocity V, V dash and V, V double dash, V, A dash, of course, V, C dash. So these are all unknown. So these all are asked to found out. So that is all. So here you see this is very clear also from the problem statement and the figure. There is no need of worrying about dimension of the vehicle. They are identical two and one of different style and all of same masses and uh, they are in line as per the statement and figure. So this would be direct central impact problem. So in direct central impact problem, <clears throat> we can have application of conservation of momentum principle. And uh, of course, we can have a uh, uh, principle of, of linear impulse and impulse and momentum linear impulse and momentum right so from the second application only we have derived this coefficient of restitution uh, in our uh, theory class and you see this consideration of uh, 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 momentum uh, consideration of momentum principle is applied on along the line of impact along the line of impact and in this case since it is direct central impact the velocities before and after all are in the line of impact and the cgs of uh, all uh, vehicle are also along the line of impact that's why it's central impact so that's a simplified uh, 
observation uh, is uh, very much uh, capable to predict this uh, after collision velocities. So now you take this uh, uh, problem now uh, as this. So what do you do? First, to consider the collision between uh, vehicle B and C. So collision between consider collision between B and C. So how am I going to write? I'm going to apply uh, consideration of momentum principle along the line of impact. So you may ask that uh, the crash event when it hits, you would have exchange of impulses and that exchange of impulses would be cancelling each other. That's why you have momentum concern. That's what we have been uh, seeing in our theory. So in such case, uh, you would uh, have now uh, applying this consideration of um, uh, momentum, I would be able to write my equation MCVC plus MVVB is what is the initial momentum between these two vehicles uh, before collision and that would be equal to after collision. Uh, so that would be MCVC dash plus MVVB dash. So as MC is equal to MV equal to MV consider this mass terms goes off. I have now VC and VB and VB also is zero as in before impact it is not moving. So this term goes off and you have now VC. VC is given with 1.5 meter. Let me consider here the convention to the left positive. The direction of velocity is to the left positive if I consider. So 1.5 meter per second here for this vehicle would be taken uh, positive here and that's going to be equal to uh, vc dash vc dash is to be found out plus vb dash so this is my first equation let's have this is equation number one and what is my equation number two equation number two is uh, from the given data uh, between uh, b and c so you are given uh, e b c coefficient of restitution as v C dash minus VB dash by VB minus VC. So substituting the values here, uh, I would have now VC dash minus VB dash, both are unknown. And whereas VB is 0 minus VC is 1.5. And that's what is equal to 0.8. So I would have my second equation, VC dash plus Sorry, we see dash minus VB dash. Uh, that's going to be you know, 0.8 into minus 1.5. That's equal uh, how much it is? Minus 1.2. Minus 1.2. That's my equation number two. So I have now two simultaneous equation. I can solve them. So if I solve that, what do I get? Uh, solving one and two, I will get uh, VC dash as 0.15. So I get positive value meter per second. So that positive value defined that the motion of this vehicle after collision is in the same forward direction. And the VB dash I get 1.35 meter per second. Again, it's positive value it's solving. So I get its motion in this direction. So uh, vehicle, uh, how do you understand now? The vehicle C goes and hits this. The stationary vehicle B gets velocity uh, one point. So VB dash is now equals 1.35 meter per second is what is its motion now. Whereas vehicle A is stationary here. Right, all are very close by. So now <coughs> let's see uh, what would happen uh, with the um, collision between vehicle a and B. Similar way you have to apply these two equations and it solves. So it's so straightforward, simple problem. So let's now look at collision between 
vehicle B and A. So I have to apply the same uh, equations here. Uh, first, what is the equation? It is consideration of momentum equation. So it is M B B B dash because this is now the velocity of the vehicle plus M A V A. That's the total momentum between vehicle A and B. That's equal to that's equal to M uh, M B V B double prime plus M A V A dash. So M A equals M B. So if you are given different masses here, accordingly you would have to have here the uh, coefficients are you have to replace accordingly, right? So it's for the simplicity in this problem, the vehicle masses are equal given. So uh, see now, uh, VB dash is just now we have got, so the mass goes off here. So uh, as we consider the convention to the left to positive in this particular problem, so we will uh, uh, have now VB dash is 1.35 and uh, here VA what is VA? VA is initially zero. That's equal to uh, this is not known. So DB double dash plus VA dash. So VA dash also we do not know. We have to find out VA dash. So this is the equation number three. And uh, other equation E A B given as 0.5. That's going to be VB dash minus VA dash by VA minus VB. And that's going to be equal to 0.5. So I would have now equation VB dash minus VA dash equals 0.5 into VA. Uh, uh, sorry, this is VB. VB double prime and this is because uh, um, uh, this is approach velocity, relative velocity between this, right? So you are going to have here, uh, this is going to be double prime. So here it's double prime uh, known. And 0.5 into VA. So VA initially is 0, minus VB is 1.35. 1.35. And uh, if I uh, deduce this, it is equation VB double dash minus VA dash equals 0.5 into 0 0.5 into 1.35 that's equal to 0. Point minus 0. 0.675 that's the equation number four now solving equation three and four simultaneously they're algebraic equation so you will have uh, vb double dash you will have VB double dash. So it is clear from this, right? VB double dash, what is that you have? By solving it simple, uh, uh, you have VB double dash equals 0 0.3375 meter per second. I get while solving positive value, so the direction with respect to our convention. And VA dash is one point. 0, 0.125 meter per second positive. So that's I mentioned. So here uh, it is uh, to be uh, noted uh, clearly that in the first case, uh, uh, the collision between B and C, so you look at uh, VB dash is greater than VC dash because VC dash is smaller than this. So this makes uh, there is no possible of VC again going and hitting it. Right, so it's one hit only. So VB dash is going to definitely hit it. So because of that, this ensures that uh, this velocity uh, VB, uh, that vehicle B would go and collide with the vehicle A. And also now we have got uh, all the answers after the collision. So these are the two answers. And uh, what we had is VC dash is uh, here. Uh, that is 0 0.15. 0 0.15 meter per second, right? So here, since the VB double dash is greater than VB, sorry, VA 
uh, uh, VA dash, right? VA dash, VA dash is greater than VB. Sorry, I have just to read. So we have here VC, whatever VC dash we had is very smaller than VB dash, which is uh, smaller than VB double dash, right? Whatever velocity that is, this is smaller than VA dash. So there is no further possibility of collision, right? There is no further collision possible. So that's how you can conclude. So what is the difficulty in solving this problem? Hope you have solved this problem correctly in your examination, right? How many of you done correctly? Okay, let's see that uh, uh, why. So now um, uh, let's look at the second problem what was asked in the exam. So this was the second problem asked. I'll just post that. So this was the problem uh, asked. Uh, how many of you have uh, made an attempt or solved this problem? So here, this is that uh, uh, another case. Again, it is a direct central impact problem. So this is again a direct central impact problem. Direct central impact problem. And it is 1D problem. We can say one dimensional motion problem. So, here what is the um, description of the problem? There are two vehicles, B and C, they collide head on head, which are identical weight. The masses of them are same given in the statement of the problem. Two cars of same mass run head on into each other at point C. So we have to have some reference that is point C. So the point C is what is just uh, describing the first contact of these two colliding vehicle. So they are coming with some velocity. So in that you are given the velocity of A, A kilometers per hour. So given data is what? A data. So these two uh, vehicle collide in that you are given VA is 8 kilometers per hour to the right. And VB is unknown. That's what is asked. What is the velocity uh, speed of the car be just before impact? So this is asked. And also what is asked, what is the effective coefficient of restitution between the two vehicle? So between A, B, what does this is also asked? So these are the two uh, questions that we need to answer. And also you are given here, uh, please note, uh, there's a coefficient of kinetic friction between the pavement and the tires of both cars are given as 0.3. So mu K given as 0.3. Right, and you see in this uh, description, uh, what does that uh, uh, difference from previous problem and here is uh, not only uh, their directions different, also you see that after collision, the positions of the two vehicles are given with reference to the uh, start of impact reference point. So end of the collision, uh, the vehicle B uh, moved ahead uh, with the 0.9 meter, and uh, whereas the vehicle A has moved. Uh, uh, 2.36 meters. So these are the data given. So these distances are given. That's also something uh, different from the previous problem. Previous problem, we were not given any distances between the vehicle when it was stationed. And uh, but here it is not so. So you see that another important uh, difference between previous problem and this problem. In previous problem, please note that uh, your vehicle. Uh, brakes are released. The brakes are released and they are kept. The two vehicle A and B are, uh, uh, are kept on the loading deck uh, dock and uh, the brakes are released. 
that means there won't be any friction when this heat we are not worried about uh, uh, friction that comes on the um, on the tire all right whereas you see here because it's freely going to roll it's going to roll freely free rolling here that's possible whereas uh, here you see the brakes locked after the collision so after the collision the car skinned with their brakes locked so the vehicle uh, uh, systems is such that when their collision is there the brakes get locked so that uh, the energy dissipation would be uh, resisted by the friction so that's why uh, maybe it is uh, also a safety aspect in the vehicle if collision takes place brakes lock uh, the movement uh, would be resisted and that can take some energy dissipation so that's why you are given this and the energy dissipation is going to be opposite to that of the dis uh, travel of this vehicle after collision uh, uh, direction all right okay and another thing it's the direct central impact so they are point masses geometry is not considered and uh, you assume that brakes locked and then its motion is skidding that's why you are given word skidding you are not uh, uh, new to this word skid skidding is um uh, full brake lock and then it is sliding that's how you should understand so now you are asked to find out after the collision uh, impact what is the um, uh, velocity b and what is the uh, coefficient of distribution that's what is asked so how can you solve this problem any idea how can you solve this problem so what all that we know our newton's law can be written as d by dt of mv so that's what is resulted in your linear impulse and momentum principle so what was that it was uh, momentum at position 1 mv1 plus fdt that's equal to mv2 so this is the principle of impulse and momentum if you write the f is equal to ma where definition of acceleration if you put it in implicit function of time that's going to be d by um, uh, it's like that m v dv by dx so in this uh, you use the v into dv by dx velocity gradient here also is definition of a you would be resulting into work and energy principle k1 plus work from 1 to 2 is what is k2 so 1 and 2 refer to what the state 1 and 2 so here maybe you consider this position c is 1 position here is 2 for vehicle a similarly position 2 here for vehicle b so this is for vehicle a this is position 2 is for vehicle b so kinetic energy at position 1 plus work done from position 1 to 2 is what is kinetic energy at position 2 at position 2 the vehicle stopped so kinetic energy is zero so i would use this work and energy principle to find out what would be the velocities just after the collision what are what are that uh, the velocity of p that is vb dash i can find and velocity of a that is va dash so anything with the prime i put it is after collision so this can be found out this two can be found out from work and energy principle and of course uh, during the collision i can uh, uh, apply uh, conservation of momentum principle along the line of impact and i can use the definition of e a b uh, uh, e a b so coefficient of distribution so that are the two additional equation and that solves the problem so let's proceed to solve this problem So first, what am I going to do at the time of collision? At the time of collision. At the time of collision, I am going to apply conservation of linear momentum along the line of impact. So if I do so, I would have now two vehicles. That is V A, M A V A, plus M B V B. Uh, that's going to be equal to it's all vectorially first i write and then i substitute the direction uh, m 
V A V A dash plus M V V B dash. Now uh, uh, the scalar equation is what uh, correspondingly since here M A is equal to M B uh, is equal to M. The mass terms in all the, um, both sides go off, and I have V A. So now V A is what uh, V A is uh, in the direction. So let me consider the direction positive in this direction. This is positive. Positive. I consider in this uh, uh, sense. Uh, you know, what what I mean by that is, look at this diagram once again. So after the collision, you see both vehicles move in this direction. So I will consider this is my uh, positive direction. This is positive direction. Positive direction for uh, the velocity. So VB dash is positive, VA dash is positive. Maybe VA initially it is in this direction, so it's negative, and VB would be positive, right? Uh, so I would have here V A uh, uh, minus V A plus V B, which I have to find out. Uh, that's equal to V A dash plus V B dash. So V A is minus eight kilometers per hour uh, <coughs> plus V B equal V A dash plus V B dash. So this is my equation one. See how many unknowns? All three are unknowns. So VB referred to what is the velocity of uh, 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 colliding vehicle B. Uh, and uh, VA dash and VB dash are the velocities of them respectively after the collision. So all three are unknown to be found out. I have this one equation now. Now my, what is my second equation? Uh, second equation uh, uh, rather I would go for now because I do not know E, A, B is not given, it's not known. And I have to find out. So I cannot use that equation here. So I will have to use now work and energy principle. That is why you should see that in collision problem, if we are given distances immediately, what is to come in your mind is uh, you should go in for work and energy principle. So since it is skidding and it is sliding, let me consider uh, from position C, the vehicle, as a block. So this is vehicle uh, A I'm considering first and see uh, it's hit so this end is somewhat um, crushed and it's going to be sliding on the skidding, skidding on the uh, floor and it goes to position 2. Position to this position one, and this distance now is 3.6 meters given. This distance now 3.6 meters. So in between, I am just going to draw its free body diagram. So its weight m a g, and it's normal. That's same as m a g. That's the n, and it's friction that's 0.3 times n. So this is the diagram. So now applying this is what after collision car A after collision car A applying work and energy principle that's KE1 at this position energy plus work from 1 to 2 from position 1 to 2 is what is equal to KE2 kinetic energy at this position. So here it is stopped. So VA2 uh, here is 0. And here what is this velocity? It is VA dash is what is velocity. So here it is half into M A into V A dash square is what is its kinetic energy. Work done since uh, the vela the force is um, in this direction. Convention to the left is positive, so it's minus and uh, frictional force 0.3 into M A into G into displacement. So displacement is what is 3.6. So that's important. 
to be put. So work done is what? Force into displacement is what is work done. And uh, weight is not 90 degrees to the motion, so will not participate in this reaction, never be there in your work equation. So the only uh, work done uh, during this motion is due to friction. And this is uh, uh, minus energy. This is the dissipated energy. And that's what is equal to zero. Why? Because at state two is what is given in the problem vehicle stopped after the collision. <clears throat> so this gives me only one unknown. So MEA goes off in this because uh, on the other side it's zero. So I would be able to get uh, what is V dash. So that would be under root of 0 0.3 into 9.81 into 3.6. And this two goes off on that side, so two. So I would have VA dash solving this as <coughs> what is that value I get? I would get um, 0.3 into 9.81 into 3.6 into 2 under root. So it is uh, 4.603 meter per second. I get positive values, so the direction is to the left. Right? So that's VA dash after collision. What is the uh, velocity? VA dash, we have got it. Now, um, similarly, I can apply after collision. Car B. So after collision, car B would be from point C. So uh, uh, it is crushed. This is car B and uh, this is that. So this is just to come till uh, this point and stop, right? And in between, uh, what would have happened? Uh, you would have here um, friction force and normal and its weight, right? So this is position one, this is position two. So the similar way if I apply uh, work and energy principle, kinetic energy is half mv uh, vb dash square minus 0.3 into mv into g into 0.9 now. So the distance given is 0.9 meter distop. Uh, um, on the other side, zero. So here VB2 is zero and VB1 is what is VB1 is what is VB dash. Right? Uh, so from this, I'll get VB dash as under root of uh, 0 0.3 into uh, 9.81 into 0.9 into 2. And I would have this value. Um, that comes out to be uh, 2.3, 2.3, it's not meter per second, it is kilometers per hour, 2.3 kilometers per hour, again, it's positive in this direction, so VB dash I have got. Sir, uh, that would be meter per second, right? Uh, not meter per second, it's given, I just took uh, meter per second. Because 9.8 was uh, meter then, per second square yeah, and 3.6 meters. Yeah, meter per second square. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's in meter per second. I'm sorry. So that's in meter per uh, second. So what was given is 8 kilometers per hour, right? Uh, yes, sir. That's 2.2 uh, meter per second. Yeah, yeah. One minute. So does that go wrong anywhere? Uh, so far, nothing happened. So this is only meter per second. Correct. I just uh, looking at the initial velocity. I was writing. I'm sorry. It's meter per second because this unit here is that so it's meter per second right uh, now uh, continuing uh, uh, looking at it uh, now uh, let me just correct it here it's uh, meter per second my notes uh, so so 8 kilometers per hour equal to, so what is given in this is uh, VA is given, right? So VA is 8 kilometers per hour. That's equal to um, 
3.6 if i uh, if i one uh, i have to divide that by um, 3.6 right so 8 by 8 divided by 3.6 that's what is 2.2 2.22 meter per second is what is uh, va velocity that uh, hits now uh, do i have yeah So now I made some mistake here when calculating. I just corrected it now. So let's continue now doing it, right? So we have now what are V uh, A dash V A dash? We have got after collision 4.603 meter per second. This is after collision. So before collision. Before collision, before collision, this VA, this H kilometers per hour is equal to 2.22 meter per second. Is that correct? So kilometers per hour, how do I change it? So kilometer would become uh, 1000 uh, meter per uh, 3600 second. So it is uh, dividing 8 by 3.6. I get 2.22 uh, meter per second. This is what is the velocity of VA? Uh, so direction of A is uh, um, in this direction, right? In this direction. Whereas uh, V A dashes in this direction. So the direction of uh, car A uh, changes after the collision. Uh, that should be obviously because uh, V B must be greater velocity. V B should be greater than V A. That's why it's changing. Let's find out whether it's so or not. And uh, what does that other thing? VB dash, we have got it now from work and energy principle. It is 2.3 meter per second to left. Okay. So this is what we have got it. So now to get VB, I have to go in for my first equation. So my first equation is uh, this. First equation is minus 8. I was writing it to minus 8. Let us correct this. VB uh, equals vb sorry va uh, dash plus vb dash so this was the equation so in this i should not put a, a minus 8 i should put uh, minus 2.22 meters per second because i have all this in meters per second so i should also convert them uh, otherwise into uh, kilometers per hour any one of that we can do it so now i would uh, be able to get vb as VA dash plus VB dash plus 2.22. So I have here VA dash found as 4.603 um, plus 2.3 plus 2.22. I would have um, plus 2.3 plus 4.603. Nine point. 1 to 5 uh, meters per second. So it's positive. So this is the direction. So in kilometers per hour, it is just to multiply by 3.6. You get 32.85 kilometers per hour. So the vehicle VB colliding with the vehicle A is almost four times more than that of vehicle A. So vehicle A, VA was before collision 8 kilometers per hour. Now vehicle B velocity we get almost uh, 32.85 kilometers per hour. So it's four times the higher velocity it hits, right? So this is that uh, question, first one is answered. What is the velocity of the vehicle before collision for the car B? So now, uh, you can very well easily find out because you know now all the velocities before collision and after collision. So it's easy to find out what is an effective coefficient of restitution. So that would be um, VB dash minus VA dash by VA minus VB. So it, it should be opposite, right? So VB dash is what? VB dash now uh, uh, is 2.3 minus VA dash is 
4.603 divided by VA is 2.22 minus VB is 9.125. So solving this, 2.3 minus 4.603 numerator I get minus 2.303 divided by 2.22 minus 9.125 that is minus uh, 6.9 zero five so that's going to be 2.303 0 0.33 0 0.33 3 so try Let me do once again 2.3 minus 4.603 divided by 2.22 minus 9.125. 0 0.333 uh, is what is E value. So it is not uh, uh, perfectly elastic uh, neither. Uh, perfectly elastic nor uh, perfectly plastic. It is semi-elastic condition. Semi-elastic condition. Or uh, it is elastoplastic condition. So now if you are asked further in this problem, what is the energy loss and so on, you can very well find out that, right? So this is all, uh, I hope you could have solved this problem or you could have made an attempt to do it uh, uh, during the exam. Is that clear? Any doubts now in this problem solving? Anyone has got a doubt? Uh, no, sir. Hello, sir. Yeah. Uh, yes. Sir, what uh, I applied is uh, the uh, kinem kinematic equation that uh, I came across uh, the 12th class or uh, like uh, yeah. v, v square equal to u square plus 2as. Yeah, the um, you, these all are very specific cases. Uh, let me just add to this uh, to have a clarity. I was also telling it. The you have all together uh, six kinematic equation. Let me see why that may not be working out here, right? Let's see. So what are that uh, motion parameters? The motion parameters are its position at any point of time, velocity at any point of time, or acceleration at any point of time. These all are function of time. So you have this radial relationships, right? And uh, peripheral circumferential relationships. So the radial relationships are called the primary kinematic equation. So X can be expressed as function of time. V can be expressed as function of time. A can be expressed as function of time. And secondary relations are V can be expressed as function of space distance. And uh, acceleration can be expressed as a function of x. And uh, uh, again, acceleration can also be expressed as function of velocity. So if we have like this, we had uh, specific cases. So there are six equations. This is general uh, six kinematic equation. So it is general six kinematic equations. So you have the relationship between these motion parameters as this way. So V is given by dx by dt. A is given by dv by dt. Or it can also be written V dv by dx. Right? So you can have um, your equations derived based on that. So now here you can have two special cases. One is what? A is 0. When you say acceleration is zero, velocity is constant. And that we call it as uniform motion. Uniform motion. If this uniform motion is in straight line, then it is equivalent to, it is a, a static problem, right? If the same uh, velocity is constant, but it is too deep motion, it is curvilinear motion, then there is an acceleration. So it is an accelerated motion. That's not uh, a static condition. That's what in competitive exam you'd be asked. When acceleration is zero, 
uh, is the um, motion of the rigid body considered to be static condition? You will be asked. You should say what? If you say yes, you have to justify. If you say no, you have to justify. The answer is yes. It is only when it is in a straight line. No, when it is in curvilinear motion, it is not static condition. You will have lateral acceleration. It's a typical acceleration. That's the answer you should give. That's a typical uh, interview question. And um, uh, now uh, when velocity is constant in this, you see A is zero. So these three equations disappears. So V is going to be only function of time. So when A is V is constant, so we have V X T only relation. So you will have velocity is given by X by T alone. So X is going to be V T and V also is constant. So X is function of T only one equation is there. So for a special case uniform motion, X is function of time alone will be there. Right And this V is constant. And this motion is called a uniform motion. And the second and next case is acceleration can be constant. So when acceleration is constant, you do not have it's varying with the X is not there, varying with the time is not there, varying with velocity is not there. So you would have only three equations. When A is constant, you would have uh, three equations. The X will be function of time. V will be function of time. And uh, uh, V can be function of space. That is that equation you are seeing. So X uh, uh, minus X naught is equal to uh, uh, U, that is V naught plus A T. That's one equation. And then you are saying next equation is uh, V as function of time. Uh, that's, why, uh, that's what is this. Uh, one minute. Uh, that equation, three equations, no, is, is equal to one minute. I write that. So the three equations comes from the um, uh, that three equation comes from well, this simple definitions here uh, through integration. Uh, let me not uh, derive that uh, for the time uh, reason. But what is the first equation? It is uh, um, v is equal to u plus v t, right? So v is equal to v naught plus v t is one equation. That is V as function of time now we have. And X is function of time when you write the X is equal to X naught plus V naught T plus half A T square. So here uh, X is function of time, the first equation. This is first equation, this is second equation. And you get here V squared is equal to V naught square plus 2AS, 2AX minus X naught. So here you see V is function of X. So these are the three equations MHS. And this can be proved with the basic definition uh, here. But when the acceleration is not constant, acceleration is varying. When A is not constant and it is varying, that's very interesting. You have all the six equations to play around. And you cannot uh, use these equations. These three equations, no more you can use it. So this is uh, first two, you should have a clarity of translational kinematic equation. You have analogous way rotational kinematic equation as well. So if we have understood that, uh, how can you apply now this kinematic equation to solve this problem? Tell me. You do not know uh, its acceleration, anything. You know only the velocity. So from velocity, if you are assuming that it is uniform motion or the uniformly acceleration motion, that's not going to help you. And it is kinetics problem, dynamic problem. You have to account the forces involved, right? If we are looking at kinematic equation, what uh, I just now have heard, these equation does not show or contain the forces or momentum. So how can you use these equations to solve this problem? So that is what is first uh, you should understand. If you are given only kinematic parameters here and you have to find the force, acceleration, that's fine. So you find from this acceleration and then you solve with the problem, it's become more complicated. So the application of Newton's law in collision of its direct form is not recommended. That's where your other forms called impulse and momentum principle or work and energy principle are very much uh, readily uh, 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 can be applied and uh, you can solve such a uh, complex uh, collision scenario, right? So please get back to your uh, answer and uh, so be Jain and just see that uh, what you have done uh, or when I correct also let me look at uh, where you go wrong and I will again correct that right is that clear
Yes, sir. Yeah. Got it, sir. Yeah. Okay, so let's stop at this time uh, for the first period and then continue with the second period. Now, maybe another half an hour, I'll take lecture and then stop. Is that fine? So let me just stop recording and start.